Behavioural Economics on a post-it number 25, uh, present bias, or what's known as present bias. Um, so this is the, the observation that people tend to place an enormous weight upon sort of the immediate moment, you know, whatever that is immediately in front of them, and pay insufficient attention to the sort of future consequences of those immediate uh, actions and behaviours. So as you can imagine, this this is um, this is a, a phenomenon that's been sort of speculated about intuitively for probably for thousands of years, but certainly for a long, long time, many hundreds of years. Uh, but the contribution again of, you know, modern behavioural economists or behavioural psychologists is that, you know, these, these things, these, these observations that people focus upon the present very heavily can be sort of empirically observed. Just a quote, a little quote at the bottom there that I've included from the great Scottish Enlightenment, Enlightenment philosopher David Hume, just to illustrate that, you know, this phenomena of what's now known as present bias has been sort of intuitively speculated about for, for many hundreds of years at least. So David Hume wrote that there is no quality in human nature which causes causes more fatal errors in our conduct than that which leads us to prefer whatever is present to the distant and remote. And similarly, you know, David Hume's friend Adam Smith says similar sort of things around present bias or what's now, now known as present bias. Whether it is a, a bias, I, I suppose it <clears throat> depends upon the, the, the context that you consider it operating within. As I've said, I think, repeatedly in these post-its, videos, you know, these phenomena are deep, seem to be deep within, these behaviours seem to lie deep within the human breast. Uh, and if therefore they were not there for a reason, if they hadn't evolved for a reason, then surely by now they would have been selected against, to use <laughs> Charles Darwin's phraseology. Um, now, you know, it might be that for much of our evolutionary history, focusing on the present was very, very important in order to get us through the day. You know, it, perhaps short-term short survival was the ultimate objective, the ultimate aim for human beings intrinsically. And it might be only with the development of modern societies that people are much more... Um, that they should pay much more attention perhaps to their futures, i.e. their futures several decades down the line. So with present bias, you know, you, you could argue perhaps that people may focus too much upon the immediate pleasures of certain types of food or of smoking behaviours or of taking certain pharmacological agents. Um, and sort of overlook the future you know, 30, 40 years down the line, health consequences of those particular behaviours. It might be that people save insufficiently for their entire retirements in the immediate moment, largely because of what's now known as present bias. You know, for much of our evolutionary history as humans, we probably didn't have to worry about our retirements 30 or 40 years into the future. Um, that might be an important consideration in modern societies. And of course, very prominently at the moment, uh, and I guess for the rest of all of our lives, is concerns about the environment, right? So environmental related behaviours um, in the immediate moment might be detrimental for the future consequences of the planet, which is something that many, obviously many, many, many people are trying to address at the moment. Um, I've just given a little illustration diagrammatically of what what, how present bias differs from the assumptions that are often made by standard economic, in standard economic, well, applications of standard economic theory when people are doing economic evaluations. Generally, in standard economic uh, applications, such as to measure um, public uh, sector programs, they do apply uh, a discounting, what's called a discount rate, over future over future consequences and over future costs. So th these are mainly focused upon future consequences. I'll leave that hanging to one side. But in relation to outcomes, 
Mm, it varies depending on who does the analysis and what the recommendations are within a particular country. It used to be the case that a 5% discount rate was called exponential discounting. A 5% discount rate per year to be applied each year was very, very common. Uh, in the UK context, at least, in terms of public um, sector investments, the recommended rate tends to be a bit lower than that now. It's about 3.5%. And there is a, a rationale for reaching that 3.5% uh, level or for recommending that 3.5% uh, level, which I won't go into because it's m more related to standard economics rather than behavioural economics. But that's the that's the rate that's generally applied. So that, for instance, the value, the outcomes that you get from a particular good would be valued less and less, gradually less and less each year as you go through time. It's called exponential discounting. Um, now, if you were instead to focus upon the discount rate or the, or the um, discounting to the future that's actually observed in individual behaviours and to, to be guided by that, as I said a moment ago, people are often demonstrate what is now called present bias or sometimes it's called hyperbolic discounting right? rather than exponential discounting and that is they place a high weight uh, on the as I've said already a high weight on the outcome or the value of a particular activity in the immediate moment the present but then they very very heavily and quickly discount the future consequences of that action right so it's, you get this, it's called a hyperbolic discounting fun, discount function. Really strong discounting initially. And then it sort of levels off after a little while. Okay, so that's the difference between standard applications, exponential discounting, and present bias, hyperbolic discounting, the discounting that people often demonstrate. In the next post, I'm going to talk a little bit about one of the implications of present bias that can leads to an obvious conflict with the assumptions of standard economic theory or standard rational choice theory. Um, but that is behavioural economics on the post-it number 25, present bias.